Greetings from Pakistan. The title of our talk is an NS3 MPTCP implementation. I'm Dr. Tariq Jidun, and this is joint work with my graduate student Kashif Nadeem. We're at the Department of Electrical Engineering at the Sayyid Babur Ali School of Science and Engineering at LAMS in Lahore in Pakistan. Here are some pictures of our lovely campus. The agenda for today's talk is the following. We'll start by providing a brief overview of MPTCP. We'll describe path managers and then go on and talk about a very popular discrete event simulator, NS3. We'll then talk about the previous implementations of MPTCP in NS3 and their shortcomings. We'll talk about the work that we did and then simulation experiments that compare our results with previous work. And then we'll discuss these results and conclude. Modern network devices such as smartphones, tablets, laptops typically have more than one network interface. For example, a smartphone has a 3G, 4G as well as a Wi-Fi interface. Now what this means is that if traffic could be split across these multiple interfaces simultaneously and then aggregated at the other end nodes, this could provide for greater throughput across the internet. And MPTCP provides exactly this capability. So what happens is that it can split the transport layer into multiple subflows and essentially then these subflows each pass or traverse through a different network interface or they traverse through the same interface but through different ports and then this traffic is then aggregated at the endpoint. MPTCP thus provides the capability of exploiting all available interfaces and splitting a single byte stream across them and pooling the available network resources to provide greater throughput. This is especially useful in data centers and provides for higher throughput as well as for shorter flow completion times. It's been standardized in 2013 by the IETF Working Group and appears as RFC 6824. This RFC provides a detailed description of MPTCP connection establishment, subflow initiation, and MPTCP options used to carry information across the internet. MPTCP is available in different Unix flavors, such as the Linux kernel, FreeBSD, as well as different flavors of the Apple operating systems. So path management is a core function of MPTCP, which upon initial setup of the MPTCP connection, creates subflows between the two end hosts. The Linux kernel implementation provides four path managers and the users can select which one to choose at compile time. They are namely default, full mesh, end if ports as well as binder. We won't be describing binder over here. Default simply means that in this mode new subflows are not created and essentially the behavior is the same as simple TCP. In full mesh, essentially multi-homed hosts advertise addresses to peers and create a complete
Network simulators such as NS3 provide researchers with a convenient tool to evaluate protocols and architectures and their importance cannot be overemphasized. There's a need for developing open source simulators for MPTCP because very few open source implementations are available. Those that they are are a bit dated. NS3 has a large community that provides support and there's a large body of existing models for the entire TCP IP stack, wireless simulation models, LTE, active queuing models, routing protocols, both for centralized, unicast, multicast, ECMP, data center network protocols, and, and, and so on. There are three previous NS3 MPTCP implementations. The first one is by Chihani and others, and it was in NS3.6. Does not provide exchange of keys during the three-way handshake at the start. Has some other issues related to authentication, buffer management, it's not backwardly compatible. And because the TCP stack was rewritten in NS3.8, it is currently obsolete. Kherkha and others uh, worked and produced uh, an MPTCP implementation in NS3.19. This follows the Linux kernel implementation and implements all of the basic MPTCP components. It is not backwardly compatible with the TCP stack and supports a subset of MPTCP options doesn't authenticate subflows and lack support for the TCP timestamp. The third one is by Matthew Goodron and others. It's in NS3.23. It covers several deficiencies of previous implementations. It implements buffer management schedulers, fast RTT round robin, as well as packet serialization but it doesn't implement path managers, which is a key uh, function of MPTCP and doesn't implement the congestion control algorithms and is not compatible with NS3.25 and later versions because the TCP stack was refactored in NS3.25. So why implement MPTCP in the NS3 dev? Previous implementations are not compatible with current NS3 stack and also lack many of the latest TCP enhancements. For example, NS3.25 provides new queuing models such as active queue management, policing, packet filtering, 3.6 provides new TCP congestion classes, C3.7 provides selective acknowledgements, 3.8 provides IPv6 support for LTE, TCP pacing, FIFO, and so on. So this means that uh, implementing MPTCP in the previous versions would result in one not having these newer features and enhancements available. So what was the development process? While developing MPTCP, our major goal was to make it less dependent on NS3 TCP classes. So we started off by Matthew Kudron's NS3.23 code and use that as a base code and then we upstream that into NS3 dev, the developer's version, figured out changes to TCP classes and made modifications in MPTCP classes, removed compatibility as well as compiler errors by debugging, removed and modified several functions in MPTCP classes to make it compatible with the NS3 stack and also made changes to the TCP classes to make them work with MPTCP. Now, in order to evaluate the efficacy of our implementation, we compare simulation results with Matthew Kudron. We simulate a scenario where a multi-homed client is connected to a wide area network with two network interfaces, that is Ethernet and Wi-Fi. The client connects to routers with links having a capacity of 2 megabits per second 
while all other links have a capacity of 2.4 gigabits as shown in the figure. We enable per packet ECMP to route packets through the network. The client sends a large file to the server and we record the bytes received by the server for different number of MPTCP flows. We then plot the good put achieved by the MPTCP connection with different number of subflows as shown in the figure. It is evident that with an increase in the number of MPTCP subflows, the achieved good put increases both with NS3 dev as well as with Kudron's implementation. However, the NS3 dev implementation achieves better good put for less than eight subflows. This can be attributed to the TCP fast retransmit and fast recovery as well as other enhancements provided in newer versions of NS3. Notice that the good put saturates to approximately four megabits per second. Plain TCP performs poorly, whereas increasing the number of subflows allows for better utilization of the available capacity. The results are in the same vein as in previous studies. Furthermore, we performed experiments on short and long flows for the same topology. We then create four subflows with NDIF ports path manager for each of the MPTCP connections. We plot these flow completion times for the short flows from 100 kilobytes to one megabyte. Uh, from the graph, it is evident that the flow completion times for NS3.26 are much sh shorter in duration in comparison with NS3.23. And the basic reason for this is a enhancements to the TCP stack of NS3 in version 3.26. This graph shows the flow completion times for long flows from one megabyte all the way up to 30 megabytes in comparison with NS3.23. We see that the flow completion times are shorter in duration for each one of the flows versus NS3.26. So essentially, optimizations in the NS3 stack and TCP provide improved throughput and minimize the flow completion times. Researchers can benefit from these latest features of NS3 by using the newer models. Path managers have been developed to initiate subflows. Our NS3 dev code is available at GitHub and is also under review by the NS community at the following site. So conclusions and future work, we implemented MPTCP in NS3 version 3.26 and onwards, which will help network researchers and engineers to carry out MPTCP simulations. Our MPTCP implementation is compatible with the current version, i.e. NS3.29. We've implemented the three path managers and in the future, hope to incorporate MPTCP in the NS3 main tree as well as create congestion control classes. So thank you very much for your attention and we'd be happy to respond to any questions uh, directed to us through email. Thank you.